Hey everyone, uh, so today uh, we're going to be analyzing Wolverine, Old Man Logan, uh, published by Marvel, Marvel Comics, written by the legendary Scottish writer Mark Miller, whose work in comics inspired the initial Avengers films, uh, Captain America Civil War, Wanted, Kick-Ass, and more that are yet to be produced. Um, the illustrations are by Steve McNiven, who had first worked with Miller on uh, Civil War and has had a prolific career with uh, Marvel ever since. Um, Old Man Logan was released as a standalone series covering eight volumes that can be purchased as a single volume that comes to about 224 pages. Um, the story takes place in an alternate timeline where the criminals of the Marvel Universe successfully banded together to defeat the heroes of the Marvel Universe 50 years before this story begins. Um, Wolverine is an old man living as a pacifist farmer when he's approached by an aging, blind Hawkeye who offers Logan an enormous sum of money to accompany him across the country to deliver a mysterious package. Uh, Logan reluctantly agrees uh, because his family, his young family rather, nascent new family, is uh, deeply in debt to uh, the inbred grandchildren of the Hulk who are not known for their nonviolent conflict resolution skills. They set off on their journey, which is immediately fraught with both peril and uh, grim cameos, uh, but the duo run into complications at the end of Act 1, uh, which is the end of Chapter 2, which is right here. Sorry, there's, as you can see, no page numbers, so I can't give you the exact page count, but uh, ends at uh, Act 1 ends at the, the end of Chapter 2. Um, Hawkeye's daughter, who happens to also be Spider-Man's granddaughter, there's a lot of back and forth and mixing of characters in this, um, she's been kidnapped by the Kingpin and is being held in Rice Eccles Stadium here in Salt Lake City where I am right now. Um, as a side note, it was really fun to see my hometown pop up in a comic. Um, and it made me think, my god, if I lived in New York City, this would be the most commonplace thing in the world because half of all comics are set there. Um, so it's up to Hawkeye and Logan to, to save her. Um, and the rescue mission is almost a success, or it is, right up until she reveals that her plan was to take over Kingpin's territory uh, rather than to free the people who lived underneath his rule. Um, and she brutally murders Kingpin and uh, then attempts to kill both her father and Logan just to prove how tough she is. Um, luckily, they escape. And after an awesome chase sequence, uh, the story moves on, and Logan actually ends up delivering the, the missing piece of one of my favorite character arcs in comics, period. Um, Hawkeye asks him why he no longer will pop his claws or participate in violence, and he reveals that on the night that the baddies took over, Xavier's school was overrun by 50 villains from all across the Marvel Universe. Um, Wolverine fought back ferociously, he held nothing back, and went for the kill, after kill, after kill, after kill. And then when he finally defeated the last foe after like 90 minutes of battle, um, it is revealed that Mysterio was the one who had actually tricked Logan into killing all of the X-Men, so none of the, the enemies that he battled were actually Marvel villains, they were the X-Men themselves. Um, and... Uh, and with that, the Wolverine is no more. Um, Act 2 continues with uh, them on their journey, with, with many, many twists and turns, and more cameos than are in the Multiverse of Madness movie, which if you've seen that one, there's, there's quite a lot in there. Um, the story follows the traditional three-act structure, so we don't move until Act 3 until the end of Chapter 6. Uh, that would be here. We get to see something kind of spooky going on. Um, as you can see, the, the middle, or the second act, comprises about 50% of the story, with 25% of the story coming in in Act 1, and 25% coming in in Act 3. So it kind of, it does the exact same breakdown um, as your, your average comic does. Um, at the end of Act 2, Logan and Hawkeye successfully deliver the package, but they're betrayed. Um, the package turns out to be vials of super so soldier serum, um, that they were hoping to build a new superhero team with, and the men they deliver it to turn out to be agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., who are working undercover and report directly to the president. And it just so happens the president of this universe is Red Skull. So, 
they, the uh, undercover agents, kill Hawkeye. Um, but luckily, thanks to his extraordinary healing powers, Logan survives. Um, he ends up getting in a massive fight with uh, Red Skull, and does still doesn't pop his claws, but in the end, end up ends up decapitating him with Captain America's shield uh, in a scene that is repeated later on in uh, Captain, or excuse me, in The Winter Soldier and the Falcon, the new uh, Disney Plus series. In that, you you see some you you see a character do something very 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 similar to what uh, Wolverine, or rather Logan, does to Red Skull. Um, Logan ends up getting the money that he needs and escaping in Iron Man's, in a, in a suit of Iron Man's armor. He escapes uh, from the White House all the way back to the West Coast. Um, however, unfortunately, in Logan's absence, the Hulk boys, uh, the, the grandchildren of the Hulk, uh, got bored and decided to go ahead and kill his family anyway. So... Yeah, bad news. Um, one of the most interesting creative decisions in this comic is its use of SFX, or lack thereof, because throughout 85% of the comic, no matter what's happening, uh, we don't get a single uh, thwack or bam or punch, not even, not even in really, really intense situations where you'd normally get some type of slice or crunch or anything. Throughout this entire book, through, through 85% of the story, nothing. No SFX all throughout. And this actually serves two purposes. Number one, it gives the story a more serious and subdued feeling, which goes right along with its post-apocalyptic narrative. And number two, and even more importantly and more awesome, uh, when Logan finally does bring his claws out, when he finds out that his family is, is dead, you're treated to a two-page spread of bright red letters against a black background, which read Sect. The uh, ultra important sound, the only sound in this story, the, the one bit of SFX you're gonna get, not only do you get it, it's this big. It takes up two whole pages. So that's a very important sound. And I, I found that, that, that that's super interesting. Um, so, in the end, Logan uh, goes ahead and he exacts bloody revenge against uh, Banner and his offspring in an orgiastic frenzy that's incredibly satisfying, especially considering uh, that their comeuppance is so well earned. It's definitely laden in this story. Logan goes through so much only to have this undone out of their act of cruelty, so it's quite satisfying to see Logan ex exact a very bloody revenge. Um, this comic is a stellar example of both transition and flow. Um, it fits with most Western comics in that a lot of the transitions um, in, uh, in the terminology of, of Scott McCloud, uh, a lot of the transitions are action to action. Uh, the, most of them, in fact, just like uh, with, with most Western comics. But um, there's a really good amount of, um, of subject to sub subject and scene to scene thrown in, which really helps this story uh, move along quickly, which matters because it, the story covers the events of 50 plus years and literally travels from one coast to the other and back again. Um, so this story needs has a lot of movement, even though it's 224 pages. There, it has a lot of movement, needs a lot of movement. Um, the uh, the story does a lot of its heavy narrative listing by using what we know about the Marvel universe and characters against us. Um, the juxtaposition and arrangement of the set pieces really pulls us along this dark and twisted path that the tale weaves. Um, I really believe that this this is comics at their very best on every conceivable level. Um, each page is a story unto itself. Every every single page in this comic uh, follows the rules that say, "Hey, we want we want a beginning, middle, and end. We want interesting things, and we want to be literally pulling the reader along." And there's constant options. They're just pulled open to a random page, and we can see that on the lead-off page, look at that. Um, and it's everywhere. It's in, it's, the attention to detail throughout this is spectacular. It's, this is the creme de la creme um, of the comics world. And there's a reason why uh, this writer has had 
so much of his work um, be produced, including this. This this itself was the um, cr creative. It was the beginning, the nascent stages of the creation of the of the film Logan, which doesn't follow the same narrative at all, but keeps a lot of that same feel and the the, the build of the character is incredibly similar. This haunted, hollow uh, man dealing with the fallout of his superhero past. Um, there, there's, there's a kind of unrestrained joy to the way this story explores the darker aspects of the superhero world that we're also familiar with. Um, while it's like really quite heady in parts, it's still, it's a lot of fun. And you can feel how much fun um, the author and illustrator had in in putting in, in getting to see Daredevil get fed to Velociraptors, um, which is really messed up, but it moves along quickly enough, and the authors are the, the creators rather are having enough fun doing it that it isn't a soul crushing experience. Um, I can't re recommend this highly enough to anyone, friend, classmate, doesn't matter who. I would say go ahead and read this. Um, although I would say that with the cop caveat that um, that it is darker and more violent than anything you would normally find in mainstream comics. So, um, but if you're anything like me, that'll just make you like it more. So, highly recommend uh, Wolverine Old Man Logan. It is uh, just spectacular. Thank you.